Well, what do you know? We're back. <laughs> just like Turkey from Thanksgiving. <laughs> Welcome to the show. I'm Yanni Rude. <laughs> and I'm just Terrell. You ever been out somewhere and overheard two people having crazy conversations? Well, we are those people, and we've been having these conversations since college, and we weren't planning on having this conversation until Wednesday, but apparently, you know, uh, Lifetime threw us for a loop and decided to throw the Where Are They Now Houston episode on immediately following. Now, he- here's what happens. We usually jump right off after watching get down in, into the trenches, and do the recaps. So we missed that completely. And, you know, thanks to you, you let us know, hey, uh, the episode's up, duh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm just glad this is our last time having to talk about these folks, I hope. Um, this has been a long, it's been a long season. Uh, mm-hmm. I still don't understand why this is your favorite show. I just don't get it, but... Uh, I'm happy to be done. Unlike Thanksgiving turkey, I'm happy to be done <laughs> with with this season 13 of Married at First Sight. I will say this. This has been a long season. And, and you've seen people say this all season long, that it's never usually this long, and it never really is this long. This is like 20 episodes. I want to say this is our 20th recap. That tells you how long the season was. It's never this long. And hopefully, and unfortunately, I should say, I was going to say hopefully it's not, but... Unfortunately, I believe they're going to make it another 20 episodes for season 14. So we're locked in for the next, um, what is that, four months, five months? Whatever. I don't, I'm don't. i not even going to try and think about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get to it, man. Um, on this Where Are They Now episode, let's just run down. Um, first of all, we'll spend the, the um, traditional 45 seconds on Ryan and Brett, our favorite couple that was never there from the very beginning. Yeah, um, I'll start with Brett. I like Brett. I really hope she finds something special. I think she's a really cool woman. Um, and, you know, they just put her, I don't know what the experts were thinking, putting her with someone with total complete views. Not only the fact that Ryan is all about looks, but just total complete views. Um, I, I don't understand that. So I wish her well. Ryan, on the other hand. So this date that he went on, I'm like, oh, you were just awkward. Yeah, you were just awkward. <laughs> At all. And like, I'm wondering if, if that's going to be a thing because she didn't seem too interested. But how can yeah. you with a camera being in your face and right. you're about to be on, you know, national TV? Um, mm-hmm. It was just the most awkward date. I'm like, dude, I, I see why you struggle. I just, I just don't get it. You pick a sushi restaurant. <laughs> I've never gone on a date and said, hey, we're going here without asking you, what do you like? Are there any food that you don't eat? You know, I don't even do that's like <laughs> 101. What do you like to eat? OK, I know a place. Let's just go here. He's just total Mr. Control. Now we're going to go here. Well, you, oh, you don't like sushi? Oh, my bad. We well, should try it. <laughs> I I could imagine him going on a date with Merlin going, we're going camping. You, and Merlin would probably be interested because Ryan makes bank. All right. So Michaela, mm-hmm. she um, she had a nice little sit down with Gil and decided not to go to the retreat. What do you feel about her in this where they now and, you know, her new exercise routine? I mean, I, I think it's great that she's done some self-reflection. Um, I don't recall if she said she was getting some therapy, but I know, you know, doing the different exercise and with the shadow boxing and she's probably picturing Zach, you know, with every uppercut that she threw. But I, I think it's it's good that, that she got some of that. Um, I still think her family needs to hold her accountable for her behavior. And yeah. if, if you feel that all of your drama stems from your dad passing, get therapy before you start dating. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think, and I never want to be the one to say that that's, uh, um, that you use that she's using that as a crutch because you can't say how death affects anybody, especially family to someone else. But, um, it, it feels like you heard it so much over and over again for as the excuse for it. And the family excuses it because of it. Um, and it almost feels like, they know, so they know how to ignore. They've, they've, they've seen this so many times. They joke about Hurricane Michaela, Hurricane K. And, you know, you're right. They've enabled her alone. It's because if she's the ba- if she's the baby, baby, right? So mm-hmm. I think that's part of it, too. They let the baby get All right, let's go. Leave the little bread alone. We'll be fine. Um, <laughs> but I will say, she's not getting therapy, which she definitely does need. And we've both said this throughout the entire season. The other thing that she needs to do is go to a class that actually has a heavy bag. You need to be able to actually physically punch something. Shadow boxing is cool for a warm up, okay? But you need to be able to hit something because you need to get that out. Because what you got, you need to let out. 
baby steps. She's working towards that. It's shadow boxing now. When she gets a little confidence up, then she'll start to hit the bag. Maybe put Zach's picture mm-hmm. on it. Start throwing some hooks, you know, and all that kind of stuff. That it's possible, but still baby steps, right? But at least she's doing something. But yes, she does need to lay on the couch and talk to somebody about her issues. And I think mm-hmm. if, regardless, everybody handles death differently. But if you know that the cause of all your frustrations and problems and different things with your attitude stems from a particular death, you need to get some therapy before you start engaging other people. So I'm curious to see what happens with her. I'm curious to see like if she winds up dating somebody, I'd love to like hear the story and like hear how, how did this dude do compared to a Zach? And I, I think she needs to move past Zach anyway. Don't put him up on the heavy bag. Nothing just completely wipe him out of your mind. Um, but you and I said this from the very beginning um, and maybe at least halfway through the season or maybe quarter way through the season. We said that she's going to be great. This show is going to help her be ready for the next guy because it wasn't going to be Zach. We knew this. <laughs> we said this early on. And um, you're right. I would love to see the story. We wish her nothing but the best. Um, I, I, and yeah, we, we, we've said she's batshit crazy all season long, but she knows that. Her family knows that. And if, as long as she faces that head on, she'll be fine. And yeah, while a lot of people in, in the comment section have always said, yeah, it's had some choice words for her. We'll still stick by her and say, go, Michaela. We wish the best for you. Yeah, I mean, wish the best, but she's still gorgeous. But I'm just glad Gil didn't fall for the okie doke because I was a little scared. When they walked out together on, at, on the reunion and then they showed up together sitting in the park, I'm like, ah, oh, shit. No, Gil, run. Even though I will say, <laughs> had she been matched with Gil, Gil's patience. Might have been enough to bring Hurricane Michaela down to tropical storm or, or tropical depression and down to a, a thunderstorm or something. You know, he he might have been the one to do it. It definitely wasn't Mr. Runaway Zach, though. <laughs> yeah, no, he would have been a great match. He would have been a great match for her. But I think Gil mm-hmm. is looking for somebody that has more of a Latin culture. And speaking of therapy, Gil needs to seek even more therapy than he got. Because even when she told him, get rid of the ring, he put it down on the bench for the camera shot and put it, I'm going to put it right back here in my pocket. Yeah, I just, I mean, Merla must have some just dynamite skills because Gil is just hardcore in love. And I I think of all the stuff that he's been through, all the things he was Mm -hmm. patient with her. To, to And I'm, I've been trying to figure it out. Like when I was watching the Where Are They Now, I'm like, what is it about her that has you this sprung on this woman? Is it the concept of marriage and that you don't divorce and all that, which I get, but also you really rolled the dice going onto a show to marry a stranger. So that can't be yeah. it. But the fact that he's just so in his feels about it, it just is weird to me. But what I'm, what I'm thinking, and you and I talked a little bit about this before we started is, I think Gil is getting groomed to be something in this reality TV show world. Not so much that they're going to have a spinoff show just for him or he's going to be the next Bachelor. Mm. But I can see him being that person that's, um, you know, uh, interviewing all the different folks and and just all that. I can see him being involved in something. But, yeah, he really needs to, to let this whole Merla thing go. Like, she totally dogged you after the after the the. What is it? Decision day? Yeah. They haven't been together since. I'm like, dude, she mm-hmm. played you. She did a number on him. I don't know what it was. And maybe because he put himself in, uh, he gave 110%. I mean, because his patience, we all said we wouldn't have his patience, right? No, that that's, that's not happening. And I think just emotional. You can't have, and you can't see, because you can see his physical strength, but you can't see his emotional strength, right? You can't see his mental strength. And I think it's, one of those things that emotionally he wrapped himself around her. And um, I will say this, though. Um, one of the things that I didn't notice in, in this episode is, is that, and all season long, I'm like, Marla was, eh, yeah, she ain't. But this episode, they made her look good. Like, they actually made her look like somebody that Gil could get wrapped, that wrapped Gil around her finger, right? There's something that had him wrapped up. I don't know what it is, and it can't be the conversation because she didn't seem like a great conversationalist. It it, <laughs> it can't be the affection and attention because she wasn't trying to show him any. I don't know. Maybe Gil just falls fast. Some people do. Some people fall fa- fast and hard, and when they do, it's impossible to get out of, and that may be the problem. Do you think maybe it's because she was so far out of his league that it was the challenge? 
And thus he felt like he overcame something. You know, if you ever meet somebody that you're just like, wow, she's out of my league. I don't know if I can, if I can even make this work. And then the fact that she likes you, you're like, holy shit, you know, this is a thing. So maybe there's, there could be that. I've I've done that where I just felt like I fell in somebody that was way out of my league. And I'm just like, holy shit. And then when it didn't work, I was crushed. Right. And so I'm thinking maybe he felt that. I don't know. I wish we could invite him to the show. Be like, hey, you know, <laughs> come on with let's, us. Talk let's to talk. us a bit. Man to man. Let's talk. Because <laughs> I really would love to know what it was. But, you know, um, and, 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 and speaking of Marla, um, it really looks like she's into Johnny, which I don't get. Um, at least it looks that way. And I don't know if this is part of the whole crush everybody mentality that, that, that her and Johnny may have. And it could be just all for the cameras because Johnny loves being in front of the cameras. He did say that. He loved being in front of the cameras. We know Myrtle loves being in front of the cameras, right? Um, and she's really showing that now, especially. Mm-hmm. And I think, I, I'm really wondering, is she really into Johnny or is this a concerted effort by them? Because they are definitely playing it up to be more than just friends by and playing coy like, no, we're just BFFs. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see them. I, I don't see them dating. I, I think they're being really friendly and all that. But mm. I think, you know, Merla has a thing for she likes some coffee in her cream. And so Johnny can't mm-hmm. provide that. Um, I don't think Johnny has the personality that can withstand a Merla. Like she would break mm. him down really quick. Oh, yeah. So it's almost like having a little pet. Right. But I, I don't see them. Being a thing, I saw. I mean, I, I saw a lot of the chatter and people thinking that they're acting like they're a couple. I don't think they are. Mm-hmm. I just think that they're just friends, and mm-hmm. that's about it. Because I just can't see them working. I was thinking that Johnny, when Johnny was on the video call with Sarah, I was thinking that he was gonna be like, "Hey, so what are you doing later for dinner? Do you want to meet up?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and it's, it's, it's funny in that sense. Uh, one of the things I thought about was. One, I was kind of surprised that Sarah was was who she was because I really thought, and 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 maybe that's just my own prejudice jumping in, but I just thought Sarah Sarah was uh, some redheaded white girl. Uh, <laughs> I thought Sarah but was a bread. One uh, thing I, I did you not notice all the different people that they brought to hang out were all a, of Asian descent. Johnny's crew and um, okay. Bow's crew and, were all but, Asian but, descent. But, so to me, John, I would just Johnny automatically did. think Sarah. Is also part Johnny's of new B, Johnny's new BFF is not is, is his two new BFFs from the show aren't aren't Asian they they they're both Hispanic so you, you just never know but the, the thing I did say I will say is that I did realize that I was right in the fact that Sarah it seems is really more into Johnny and she was more like well I should have been matched with Johnny why was Bao matched and she felt and and she sabotaged Bao purposely and because. Even on that call that they had, Johnny's like, I don't want to talk about her. I don't want to talk to her. I don't want anything to do with her. And yet all they did was talk about her. And I know it's the power of editing, but they gave them enough things to talk about. Because <laughs> all they talked about was Bao, even though Bao refused to talk about him unless somebody brought him up. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's obvious Johnny's not over it. Um, and in the sense of Merla and Johnny, and you say the whole BFF thing, Maybe Merla sees Johnny as the gay best friend, you know, who because they're always very <laughs> friendly, touchy feely with the gay best friend, and that's what she looks at Johnny as, and he just has no idea. But you know, the fact that he is so caught up on Bao that he ran away from the retreat as soon as she showed up shows me that he is truly not over the fact that she flipped the the um, the, the 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 script on her on decision day and did what she said she was going to do, which was, yeah, I'm not going to be here if you're not going to be here. So just because he came to, to BS around. Well, and I think it's because Johnny's used to being the one to end relationships and to, mm-hmm. to break out when it's not going well. Remember he said that to Bao, like if this was traditional dating, not the show, mm-hmm. I would have ended it a long time ago, but to have True. someone reject him is yeah. messing with his ego mm-hmm. because he and constantly fact, keeps right. talking bad about her. And I think You're that's right. his way to lash out like a child, right? So you know what, you are so right because he say that again. What, what did she? <laughs> it again. What happened was throughout the throughout the season, <laughs> she kept she kept saying that she was trying and she kept trying. So he goes, "Huh? You're right." He could have thought that this is what she's going to say yes on decision day i'm going to say yes and then merla and i are going to pull the great okie doke come off as the villains of this season and then bow just throw a monkey wrench all up in his shit 
you know, hope Johnny finds whatever he's looking for. I think he's admitted that he needs uh hopefully he gets some counseling too, because he has some issues uh that yes. he could use some therapy on. And and therapy's not a bad thing. You know, I think sometimes people think when people get seek therapy that it's bad. It's like, no, therapy's good. You know, you sometimes you need professionals that you can talk talk stuff with outside of your friends. Because your friends are often yeah. are gonna tell you what you want to hear. Uh, but not, not ours. Well, true. Not you. You not and me. I, we wouldn't do that. <laughs> if you call me for therapy, you're going to get the real deal. Um, and if anyone else wants a therapy. I, what, I want to hear the truth, not because I want to hear what I want to hear. <laughs> yeah. If anyone else wants a therapy session from Matches Terrell, follow me, my only fans at, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> so you got, we, we covered Brett Ryan. We got Johnny. I think there's more we want to talk about it with Val. Um, what about let's go to Rachel? Jose and Rachel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know when you when you look at Jose and Rachel, right? Um, the fact that when this episode started, they said that there were more issues. Neither you or I were surprised. Um, but then they flipped the script on, the, on at the end of the episode and said they're moving back in. Which again, again, if they're working towards this, and as the only couple to survive this season. They got to give it at least one more chance if they're going to go through this, right? Um, you say no. I would say no because if she's my friend and, and that's why her friends have no real sympathy for him. And I like he's got it. But I love the fact that his, her friends did not let him off the hook. And I know you did too. Oh, I did. I did. And they did it in a nice way. But yes. you, you and I are, you know, we're very real, right? All it takes is one time mm -hmm. for somebody to done something like that to you. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't piss on them if they were on fire. Like, I, that's, mm -hmm. that's my loyalty to my friend. And so <laughs> I think Rachel had to move out because not only did her family, her friends were all giving her shit. And mm -hmm. so this is John, this is Jose's chance to try to shine. But again, it's temporary because Jose seemed amazing until he told her to get the fuck out and locked her out of the way. house. I just want to point out the reason Jose told her to get the fuck out is the same reason that he would probably tell you the same thing. Because this is the second episode in a row. You've called him Johnny at least twice. <laughs> Whatever. Still. Uh, uh, he'd yeah. Feel, he'd feel a kind of way. He'd be in his feelings yeah, right now. I called him a different name. So deal with it. But, uh, but I mean, I think that Rachel needed her friends and family to buy in because yeah. she was in. Mm -hmm. It's just probably after decision day, her friends and family are like, can I talk to you for a minute? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and just kind of had some real talk with her. And so she had to like, well, crap, you know, I can't be with somebody who all my friends and family hate because friends and family are really important to her. And so Jose has to try to go through these hoops. But the real Jose is going to come out and it comes out when he gets mad or whatever, which is typical of anybody that has that machismo type of mentality that once he gets pissed, he's going to lose his shit and the real him is going to come out. Uh, I'm just going to say kudos to her friends um, and the family who told her walk away. Um, but that's all you can do. And you know this, um, you know, friends are going to do what they want to do. People are going to do whatever they want to do, right? So no matter what you tell them, if they feel they want to go back and give it another shot, they're going to go back and give it another shot. You've got a choice then. You either stay mad or you go, okay, I'll be here to pick up the pieces. And hopefully they're to pick up the pieces if this goes left again, or should we say when it goes left again, because you and I both know. Apparently, even after saying all that on decision day and in the reunion, he still did more stuff because she moved back out again. Because they tried after the reunion show and she moved back out again. It was only four months. So that tells you this is not going to get better. And this is going to be the three strikes you're out. And at this point, I think it's done. I hope it's done, you know, for, for her sake. Uh, and I hope they yeah. don't, oops, have a kid and bring a kid into this mix. Because that's going to mm -hmm. be more drama. So Rachel, like you know, like Whoopi Goldberg said in the movie Ghost, you in danger, girl. <laughs> hey. Get one of the, get a condom made out of that um, stuff that he uses for those uh, astronauts. <laughs> <laughs> can I get one of those space condoms that, that nothing can get through? <laughs> oh my god! You know, 
this is the one that we talked about for a while during the season, Zach and Bao, and the fact that this rumor was out there, and apparently this is what they were shooting, this is what people saw, was scenes from this episode, which we kind of figured it was coming in this Where Are They Now, and this Where Are They Now was them actually, first of all, the clicks. You had the the click of Jose, Rachel, Marla, and Johnny, then the other click of... Um, Zach, Bao, and Ryan, right? So, and it starts off that way. As soon as Ryan leaves, and he has this awkward, it, and it just felt so scripted. Oh, Zach, you're never this bad playing pool. Well, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, who wrote this shit? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he asks her out. She pauses and uh, and then he goes off on some. Well, if you don't want to, you don't have to. But uh, you know, I was like, look. Ask or don't ask. Right. Don't backpedal. Right. I would be really curious what our psychologist friend thinks about this. Because mm-hmm. here's what I walked away from. Not only that interaction when they're playing pool, but then also their date. Mm. I think that Zach is great at the courting phase. He's great mm-hmm. at the first date, the compliments and all that stuff. Because he did it to Michaela too. But then when all of a sudden all the real stuff came, that's when immature Zach came out and then i have to run because she doesn't shit's think he's immature ripped. though she thinks he's a perfectionist of course, remember of course but that's because bow is smart right and this is nothing against michaela mm-hmm. bow is smart and bow has real direct conversations and mm-hmm. so it's not going to be all this roundabout so as soon as zach yep. starts being zach she's going to hit him with the real and then that's when yep. you're going to see immature zach come out and then walk away but he's great at the whole flirty saying all the right things knowing what to say He's been around Bao enough to know what she didn't get from Johnny. And then it's just doing those things. And she's eating every bit of it up. And so I was mm-hmm. just like, hmm, you know, this, I, I don't think Bao's a pushover. And so I think that's great for Zach. But I think Zach struggles with the reality of a relationship. Um, the good, the bad, and the ugly part of a relationship. Mm-hmm. Zach's not good at that. But the whole courting, going on a date, Zach could be awesome. Everybody's going to think he's amazing and charming. Just like Michaela's sisters did when they all met him. Oh, he's so great. Yeah. No, he cray. Well, see, here's, here's the thing about it, too. It's like, you know, I think the, the bad thing is that I think when it goes south, the women who were all about and all uh, compassionate to Zach are going to be like, well, see, we knew Bao was, you know, controlling and manipulative because that's the narrative that they tried to put on her. No, she was straightforward. She told you exactly what she is and what she wants, mm-hmm. right? She, she, she's, she's not afraid to do it. And I'm, I'm, I'm not, and that's one of the things I, I liked about the part of the reunion. When um, Dr. Viviana tried to go that route and Pastor Cal or Pastor Troy, as you like to call him, checked her and was like, I don't agree because she said exactly what she wants. Johnny was the one who did this. And I think what happens with Bao is that it, it, the same thing would happen. It's just, and I, I'm, I'm really surprised because I think it's the same kind of um, stigma that strong black women get when they go, oh, you're the ABG or the ABW, you know, angry black girl, the angry black woman, you know? And it's like, no, I've told you what I want. This is what it is. Don't bullshit me. And I think that's where, that's where she stands. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when this, goes sideways because it will because zach's gonna zach's gonna zach zach's gonna zach right <laughs> he's definitely gonna zach you know um yeah i'm curious to see where it would go um i i find it let's just say you and i were on the show right and i know you don't do hypotheticals but let's say you or i were, were on the show and whoever i was part match with you were matched with and y'all don't work out and then i go pursue her would that bother you well, see, it's funny you should ask that question, right? And I'll tell you why, because I was literally about to pose this to you because what happens at the retreat, you see when when Zach gets there, Zach and Johnny hug. Now, Bowie totally ignores Johnny because she's like, fuck Johnny, I'm, we, we, mm-hmm. we're cool, right? Even though Johnny's like, hey, Bow, I would say she's being a child. She's not even saying hi back to me. You said you didn't care about her. You didn't want to see her. You didn't want to talk to her. It shouldn't bother you. Matter of fact, don't even say hi. If you say hi, she doesn't say anything, move on. Go hug up on Merla. But Zach never once pulled him to the side. Remember, they're supposed to be cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're not BFFs. But they're supposed to be cool. They're not Jose and Johnny. But it's still Zach and Johnny. Right. They never talked. Yep. And he never and he never once pulled him to the side and go, look, man, I, um, I know y'all are done. You don't want anything to do with her. I just want you to know that, you know, I've, I've been out. Would you 
Are you fine with him not doing that? Because they're not no. really best friends. No. Oh, okay. I'm not, I'm not fine with him not doing that. And that's kind of where I was going with this. Because even, even back when we were in college, there were some times where somebody I dated was interested in you, vice versa. We always communicated to each other about it. It yeah, wasn't we like we weren't talking. We were. We always talk. Yeah. So, yeah, no, no, no girl is going to come between this. And so oh, I was up front. No. Hey, so and so I think is interested in me. I want to pursue. Are you cool with that? If not, I'll totally leave it alone. And we had that yep. dialogue and mm-hmm. we weren't even this close then. Right. But we still had the dialogue. And I think that it's Zach. Respect. Exactly. To me, Zach should have been like, hey, Johnny, can I talk to you for a couple minutes? And just say, hey, so here's the deal. And just be honest. And then you're good. The fact that you're, you can't be homeboys and dap them up and then do that. I think that's shady. The thing is, he should have told Bao, like, I'm, if John, or John, y'all saw Johnny outside. So you, you know he's there. Hey, look, I know you don't care, but for me, I've got to at least have this conversation with him. Yep. If that means we don't go out on another date, then so be it. But. As a man, I have to do this because we're in the same space. And and I knew um, I remember uh, when I was in in Charleston. And perfect example of this. This is not even friends, right? And this is a respect factor. Woman who I knew was dating somebody else. Well, I found out she's dating somebody. Else. I go, wait, that's your boyfriend? She goes, yeah. I said, he hasn't done anything wrong to me. I can't see you. <laughs> now, now he was dirty. <laughs> Yeah, that be dirty. <laughs> All bets are off. But again, it's a respect factor. So I agree with I agree with you on that. And you're right in that sense. Yep. He owed him. But then again, neither you or I are surprised that Zach wouldn't do that. Of course, Gil would, but Zach wouldn't. Of course, because Zach's shady, right? But mm-hmm. even when I was on dating apps, mm-hmm. if someone, because on some of the apps you can see that y'all have mutual friends or whatever. Mm-hmm. If I saw that we had a mutual friend and I know the guy and I'm like, oh, I know that dude and I know all about that dude, mm-hmm. I'm going to call him and be like, hey, so I see that you're I met a match with this girl. I see y'all are connected on social. A, did y'all date? Because there's certain dudes like if you dated him, I am not going anywhere near you because <laughs> I know him. Right. And so my first question is, did y'all date? And then if it's like either, yes, we did. She was a great person. to the day, I'm like, OK, cool. Would you have any issue if I went out on a date with her? You know, especially if we're friends. If we're just some people that we just happen to be friends on Facebook, but we've never talked, I wouldn't go that route. But if you are my friend, I'm always yeah. going to ask and say, hey, are you cool if I go out mm-hmm. with this person just in case? Because I don't want to make it weird and I don't want it to be a secret. Like, that's the thing that I feel like Zach did in that moment is you made Johnny the ass because you and Bao and majority of the world knows that y'all are doing something, mm-hmm. but Johnny didn't know about it. And that was your time to say, hey, Johnny, can we talk real quick? So, shady. It is shady, but I will say this. I would love to see Johnny's face when he finds out that that actually happened. I would have loved to see his, his face when that popped up because Johnny was an asshole this entire season and he deserved the shit and the heart. The, the, he won't admit to a heartbreak, but the heartbreak he's going to feel when that, because he didn't get the chance to break her heart and she just walked away and walked away as if she was unscathed. She was just like, the shit he said to her that would have broken down a lot of other people that didn't break her has got to make him feel like mm-hmm. shit. And hopefully he really doesn't. The whole him flirting with Merla, she doesn't care. And he's like, well, she keeps bringing up the same argument. Yeah. Yeah, no, good you for Bao. bringing her up. Good for Bao. I say, Bao, you do you. Live your life regardless. And I love the fact mm-hmm. that she's just moved on. She's like, I don't even want to talk about Johnny. Like, she's just done with it. Where Johnny yeah. keeps just being super negative about her even he was talking yep. to sarah so i'm like good for her but zach you shady you shady zach yeah indeed well look man you know um it'll be interesting to see at some point we'll find out some more about these folks but this is the last time we actually officially have to talk about them Thank you, Jesus. um until we get to <laughs> january 5th is when we're back for <laughs> the wonderful season 14 married at first sight boston Boston. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be the show's so stupid. And it's gonna be longer. Like I'm mentally preparing myself that each episode is gonna be longer because mm-hmm. they know I hate it now and they're just gonna drag this crap out. Um so it's the last cool. time though in Boston they had a black couple and the black couple, the girl was ready and he the guy was just like, Yeah, no, nah, I'm we're not doing anything. And so it was it was a nice little twist and stuff. 
Um, and they lasted a while. I had a little kid. I don't know if they're still together anymore, but yeah. Um, Boston should be interesting. Boston. Boston. <laughs> Boston. <laughs> Dorchester. <laughs> Hey, don't forget to check out our regular episodes. Monday, we drop the audio. Tuesday, we drop the video. And starting January 5th, we'll be back with a Married at First Sight audio and video recap. So um, until then, happy holidays, man. And I hope, hope you enjoy the rest of the Thanksgiving weekend. And please comment below. Pass it on. Share with a yep. friend. Tell a friend. And tell them follow. Yes, definitely. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. When we get to 400 subscribers, I personally will give our 400 subscriber $100. Y'all need to know I was going to say that. I just said that just now. Uh, no, because I'm about to I'm about to unsubscribe and resubscribe at 400. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, baby need diapers, damn yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Yanni Rude. I'm Just Terrell. Make sure you follow us at Yanni Rude, at Just Terrell, and at RGRT Pod. Yeah, send us some of your random thoughts, some of your bullshit. We'll talk about it on a regular show. It's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. Cheers. Cheers, brother.